in a process of revealing himself to Jacob, one of our patriarchs. And uh, when he was ministering to him, <clears throat> Jacob made a vow after God appeared to him and he named, he named the place Bethel, means house of God. And he made a, a, a vow unto the Lord. Now this was even before the Torah was written, even the Bible was written, even before the law of Moses came. Here we find that Jacob, our patriarch, was making a vow. And he makes a vow and he says in verse 20, And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. In verse 22, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. For, uh, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee the tenth unto thee. This was Jacob's vow unto God the Father at the time. He said, God, all that you bless me through the work of my hands, all that you will bestow unto me, I am bound to give you a tenth of it unto you. And so even before the Bible was written, even before, you know, religions were created and formed, you know, our patriarchs, they made a vow. Abraham paid the tithe unto God. Jacob paid the tithe unto God. Isaac paid the tithe unto God. Even when there was famine in the land, the Bible says in Genesis 26, God appeared to Isaac and said, don't go back to Egypt for help. Egypt is a place of bondage, of fear. And so God was saying, don't go back to Egypt, but wait there on. And God appeared to him. And there when the land was gravel and stone and dry and weary, the Bible says Isaac sowed in that weary land, in that dry land. And the Bible records that in that very same year, God blessed him with a hundredfold. And over a period of time, Isaac, a patriarch, became filial rich, more richer than the king of the land. So that King Abimelech had to come and make a truce with Isaac, saying, You have become more than us. Your wealth and riches have multiplied more than us. And so let's make a truce so that you will not overpower the land. And that's what happened with Isaac, your patriarch. And I let me tell you, when you worship God with your tithes and with your offerings unto the Lord, God is no debtor of any man. God is no respecter of any man. But God says, a heart that is willing to give to Him. And not only the ten person, but the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6, it says, he who soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully so that's the new testament principle so when you sow much into the kingdom of god for the propagation of the kingdom of god of his word god sees it and blesses it and i want to give you a testimony this morning concerning suresh who is a member of a church and who also works hard in the church and ever since he has put his hand into the plow never looked back this young man who was single man worked hard and he was still date a junior engineer but now he got a double promotion. Not a man engineer, but he became a senior engineer with double the salary. Hallelujah. Give God all the glory. If God can do that in recess times, if God can do that if there is famine for the wicked people outside, God is well able to do the same for you even today. If he can do it for Suresh, he can do it for you and for me today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Amen. So, take your tithes and take your seed in your hand and say, Lord, I want to bless you with my tithes and with my offerings. And I will put it into the bag and I will say, Lord, you will bless the work of my hands and you will honor the seed that I give unto you. And you will cause the rain to fall, cause the sunlight to shine upon it so that, Lord, when the harvest will come, it will be an abounding harvest into my life that I'll have no room to contain it and Jesus will be glorified. And let me tell you why Jesus blesses you. Why Jesus blesses you? So that you will give more. Amen? Amen? You will give more. When the poor and the needy are taken care of, when the propagation of the gospel is taken care of, God will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that you will not be able to keep it enough in your rooms. Amen? Hallelujah. As the people of God bring the song unto the Lord, we will give joyfully in the house of God. Thank you.